Hello and welcome to Log Analytics, a part of the Monitoring and Troubleshooting Applications with Application Insights course. In this module, we will introduce you to the Custo query language for querying data directly from Application Insights. My name is Kevin Griffin. I'm an independent software consultant and 10-time Microsoft MVP focused in ASP.NET development and deploying solutions to Microsoft Azure. It is my pleasure to teach you some of the ins and outs of Application Insights and how it can be beneficial to your projects. In this module, we are going to walk through the basics of log analytics and the types of data that log analytics can query. This will lead us into an overview of the CUSO query language or KQL and how we can extract vitally useful information out of application insights. In this section, we'll discuss the types of data that can be queried from log analytics. When you log into Application Insights Log Analytics, you are presented with a list of data collections you can query from. We will walk through this list a little bit deeper, but it's worth remembering that the data in Log Analytics is everything collected and retained by Application Insights. As you can imagine, the sheer amount of data can be exhausting. Therefore, it is a good practice to limit your data sample rates so you're not retaining everything happening in your application. Even though by default, Application Insights retains 100% of the metrics you send to it. Let's quickly walk through how to limit the data Application Insights samples and retains. In this demo, we'll discuss how to adjust the data sample and retaining rates used by Application Insights. Now here we are back in the Azure portal and we want to set up Application Insights to change the percentage of samples it's going to retain long term. And the biggest reason you would do this is if you have an overly chatty application. And by chatty, I mean it's sending a lot of requests to Application Insights over a long period of time. Because every sample that comes into Application Insights is going to be logged and stored for long term use. And if you're storing a abnormal amount of information, you're going to get charged for this. And over the long term, you're probably not using all this data. So you might want to pull back uh, the sampling rate. So how you do this is in the Azure portal, you're going to scroll down the left sidebar to usage and estimated costs. And this view, depending on when you come to it, will show you how much you're currently using for ingestion and how much you're using for custom metrics and things like that. Uh, as you can see, my estimated cost uh, outside of the free limits that you get out of Application Insights is going to be about $4. And that's because my monthly usage over the past 31 days has been almost 2 gigs. And I have some applications out there where we're getting up in the 15, 16 gigabytes worth of information that Application Insights is storing over a long period of time. So what I've done is in these cases where I don't need all the samples coming in all the time, I've gone up to data sampling on the toolbar and I've changed from all data, 100% of samples down to something more manageable like 33 or 25% and click OK. This will change your sampling rate from now on. Now this means you're probably not going to get all the information that you're expecting to get stored in Application Insights. You're going to get a sample of it. So if you're running into any issues, you're going to get a sample of the issues that you're running into. If you're doing things like new deployments or you're testing new feature sets or anything that's a, a large change of your infrastructure, it's a good idea to go in and turn data sampling up to 100% or closer to it just for a short term period. And you can always pull it back down later. Now, if you're in a case where you need longer data retention rates, you can go to data retention and change this from the default, which is 90 days, that's just included with Application Insights, up to something maybe like 365 days if you need an entire year worth of data stored from your application. And lastly, you can also cap the amount of data that Application Insights will sample on a particular day. And that's done through daily cap. Now by default, your daily cap is 100 gigabytes per day. I have never hit this in any of my applications out there, but your results might vary. You could knock this down to one gigabyte a day or, or less, depending on what you need to know. 
Now, if you're coming close to your cap and if you hit your cap, you're going to stop receiving data inside application insights until the cap resets itself. You can get an email warning to any of the subscription admins when that happens. But generally in my day to day use, this has never been a problem and I leave it at its default. So there you go. That's a little bit about data sampling and what samples are going to get retained when you're running application insights. Diving deeper into the types of collections that are available within application insights. We'll start at the top with the traces collection. This is a collection of all the debug or trace messages issued by your application. If you do not have tracing enabled, it is likely this collection will be empty. In the custom events collection, you'll find references to all custom events emitted by your app. Again, since custom events are optional features to use and have to be explicitly defined within your application code, it is likely this collection could be empty as well. If you're using the feature, you'll find the custom event in any metadata contained along with that custom event. The page views collection is a reference to any entries from the client side based SDKs. These metrics include all pages loaded and viewed by users, the endpoints that initiated the viewing, and how long it took to fully load the page. Additionally, client data such as browser types and IP locations are available as well. Most likely one of the larger collections in the list, the request collection contains data for all requests made to your services. This includes useful information such as the request URL, whether it was successful, and how long the request took. The dependencies collection references all requests to external dependencies from your application. For example, if you have a request to a SQL Server instance, the dependencies collection will tell you what server you talk to, what query or command was sent, and whether it was successful. In addition to that, the collection will tell you how long the request took and the action that led up to the request being made. The exceptions collection is the raw data collected for any unhandled or tracked exceptions your application might encounter. If you're taking advantage of the availability testing features of Application Insights, you can directly query the results of those tests via the availability results collection. This collection will contain the test perform, which data center it was performed from, and whether or not it passed. Within Application Insights, it is possible to collect your own custom metrics that are not predefined or collected by Application Insights by default. While these metrics are accessible in other areas of Application Insights, you can query all the data directly within Log Analytics via the Custom Metrics Collection. The Performance Counters Collection, as you might imagine, is a collection of all the performance counter metrics collected by Application Insights. This data will be segmented by the server the application is running on, so if your application is scaled across multiple machines, all the appropriate performance counters for each machine will be counted. Lastly, the Browser Timings Collection provides you with all the timing data collected by Application Insights when enabled within a browser-based application. Typically, this collection will be used to reference page loads, acid loading, and asynchronous requests. Each item contains timing data for how long the request took and how long the response took. Additionally, contextual data about the user is provided as well as including the client's operating system, their browser type, and the geolocation of the user's IP address. In this section, we'll provide you with an introduction to KQL and how to use it with Log Analytics. Log Analytics uses the CUSO query language, or KQL for short, to query data and render results. This is done in very simple but structured query format similar to SQL. Constructs of KQL might also be familiar to users of PowerShell. We'll walk through an example of building a KQL query to show you how to get the results you're looking for. All KQL queries begin with a reference to a collection. In this example, I'm referencing the request collection we discussed earlier. And by itself, this request will return all the items in the collection with no filtering. 
The pipe delimiter tells the query to pass the results of the previous part of the query to a new command. Our command above passes the results into a new filter that filters by results code. In our example, we only want to see requests where the result code or status code is not 200 OK. This filtering can get several layers deep if you want to. Unlike SQL, you're not limited to a single WHERE clause. You can continue to pipe the results of one query into another query. And this is new. The summarize command is an aggregation that will help you understand your data by summarizing it. Our updated command asks Log Analytics to take any request that isn't a 200 OK or a 302 redirect and tell us the average duration of the request ordered by the request name or the path. This gives us a pretty useful table of our average request times by request name, but this is just one example. Here's another example of a query you can do in Log Analytics. Let's start with the first line. The page views collection will be used and passed into the next part of the query where we want to filter on only page views whose client type is browser. With that data filter, we'll pass it to line three, which will do a little bit more complicated summarize. This time, the request will be counted and divided into bins. The bins are defined as every 30 minutes back through the beginning of the data. By default, Log Analytics will only show you 24 hours worth of data. That's why we have 24 hours worth of bins. Each bin will contain a count for the number of page views within that 30 minute time period. And if we stop there, Log Analytics would provide us with a grid or a table of all the data, but that's boring. So instead, let's pipe the results one more time to ask Log Analytics to render the data as a time chart. Let's dive into this example for real and show you some of the ways we can alter the request to see our data differently. In this demo, we'll take our previous example and walk through the tools provided by Log Analytics to gather more information. Coming into the Application Insights Overview page, we want to get started with Log Analytics. And this is done by going to the log section on the left sidebar. Now you can just jump in and start writing queries. You can select endpoints or explore endpoints a little bit more by using the left sidebar. This will tell you all the collections that we've already talked about and some of the properties assigned to all the different endpoints. And what I like to do is start this with a question. And most of your queries in Application Insights are going to start with a question. And my question is, what are my slowest endpoints? And let's walk through writing this query step by step. The first part of any query is going to be the collection you are querying. And you have a choice of all these here on the left. Now I'm going to start with requests. And instead of just clicking, I'm going to start typing it in. Notice, as you type anything into the query box, it's going to give you real-time IntelliSense of what options you have available to you. Clicking on Request then automatically pipes it to our next filter. But before we go that far, let's just run Requests by itself. As a next step, I'm going to change the time range to the last seven days, just to ensure that I have the greatest amount of data available for my query. Well, let's pipe this one step further. We'll take any query where, not empty duration. Next time we get the calculation of the total duration for all the endpoints. And that's going to be the duration of an item times the number of items. We'll use the extend command to extend our table a little bit further by adding the total duration, which is equal to duration times item count. Rerunning this query gives us our same data, but if I mouse over to the right, we'll see I now have a total duration column that tells me what the total duration is for each endpoint. Now this data by itself is not very useful. Let's summarize it to get the average duration which is equal to 
the sum of total duration divided by the sum of the item count. And I want to order that by the operation name. This calculation gives me the average duration for all my endpoints. Now I can order this by average duration. And we see that stress delay is going to be my slowest endpoint overall, followed by get DB result. And these are all recorded in milliseconds. And if I wanted to go even further, I could just tell Application Insights to take the top three and provide those to me. So my top three slowest endpoints are stress delay, get DB result, and then the endpoint for setting a locale. If this is going to be a query you're going to run often, you can save it by giving it a name. We'll say slows endpoints. And we'll save it as a query. And I can save it as a query for me, or I can save it as a shared query for anyone else that has access to this log analytics instance. As a save query, now if you come back to Application Insights later, and go to logs, your queries will be available in the Query Explorer, where you can reload it and run it anytime. And there you go. That's how you use log analytics to query your data in Application Insights. In summary, we introduced you to log analytics by discussing some of the types of data Application Insights gathers and retains for you to query. As a side note, we discussed how to limit your data sampling and retaining rates to decrease costs. And lastly, we dove into the Custo Query Language, or KQL, which is a powerful but simple structured language for getting the details we want out of Application Insights. Thanks for listening to the Log Analytics module, part of Monitoring and Troubleshooting Applications with Application Insights course on Skill Me Up. My name is Kevin Griffin.